Item number 6952 Level 4 Secret Containment Class Safe Secondary Class Thaumiel Disruption Class Eki Risk Class Notice Assigned Site Site 78 Site Director Leia Richter Research Head Maria Johnston Assigned Task Force Omega-45 Street Samurai Special Containment Procedures SCP-6952 is to be kept sealed within an adamantite case when not in use, and may only be removed with authorization from members of Omega-45 or designated researchers who possess Level 4 clearance or above. Before construction begins, new entries within SCP-6952 must be approved first by the Ethics Committee. And instances of SCP-6952-1 shall only be used by members of Omega-45. In the event that a member of Omega-45 falls in combat, any SCP-6952-1 weaponry must be retrieved or scuttled at all costs. Foundation recovery sites are built around instances of SCP-6952-2 for their retrieval and any discoveries of SCP-6952-2 by civilians should be promptly recovered and covered up. Witness anesthetization should be applied as needed. SCP-6952 is a leather-bound book with metal covers. On the spine of SCP-6952 is an engraving that reads, Six of Nine. SCP-6952 is a manual on the creation and development of anomalous weapons and armor, hereby classified as SCP-6952-1 instances. The creation of new instructions on SCP-6952-1 instances is triggered by writing on a blank page of the book, which will prompt the anomaly to start writing schematics, forgery instructions, and usage guidelines. Currently, there are three known limits to the manual. It is unable to create weapons that can damage anomalies with indestructible or immortal properties, and other books of the set of nine. Furthermore, queries to build weapons to target the author of SCP-6952 will not be answered. SCP-6952-2 instances are anomalous materials and devices that facilitate the anomalous properties of SCP-6952-1 weaponry. SCP-6952-2 instances are created along with SCP-6952-1 if the requisite materials do not already exist. Repeated queries to the manual will lead to different SCP-6952-1s being created. These resources show promise for a variety of uses outside of weapons development, and research is currently ongoing into their applications. Anecdotally, Describing or asking for documents regarding things that aren't considered weaponry will result in a failed query. The request must be distinctly for something like a sword, gun, bomb, or similar objects. SCP-6952 appears to be able to create more pages for its weapons if all of them are filled with queries. Instances of SCP-6952-1 that are approved by the Ethics Committee are allowed for use by MTF Omega-45 to aid in the capture of anomalies and combat with hostile GOI units. This weaponry provided by SCP-6952 has aided in the capture of over 50 anomalies thus far. Discovery SCP-6952 was discovered on May 3, 2022 by a mixed unit of Valkyries belonging to the Val Raven Corporation. All-female cyborg combat unit, designed for infiltration. This unit was deployed against GOI-8947, Bulk Division, a mercenary group that was sighted using anomalous and unidentified weaponry. The Valkyries were successful in eliminating the mercenaries and retrieved SCP-6952 from their operating base. After returning SCP-6952 to the Val Raven, the High Table contacted the O5 Council a few days later, offering to trade SCP-6952 for information on SCP-6755. 
Bow Raven Corporation's Board of Directors. The following video transcript was declassified and made available to Level 4 personnel to appraise them on the situation involving the Set of Nine and the Bow Raven Corporation. Video Log 05 Council Meeting Data expunged. Recording started. 05 1 Greeting, CEO. We haven't spoken since the Cartagena Agreement was signed. I trust you're doing well. HT CEO Our organization has been thriving, 05 1. Profits are high. Contracts are flowing. Can't complain. 05 2 05 1 I must state that I don't believe the Foundation should be extending unwarranted cordiality towards mercenaries. 05-3 Dash 2 is right. If it wasn't for our pressure, the Corporation would still be employing anomalies in warfare without any regard for the veil or collateral damage. HTCIO Our Foundation hands so clean of blood? Our clients hire us to protect normalcy when the Foundation doesn't feel like getting their hands dirty. 05-1 Let's not sidetrack into unproductive bickering. As I understand, Val Raven's CEO has come to us with an offer. Let's not waste more of our precious time with nonsense. HT CEO Well, and regardless of past disagreements, I was hoping to improve our relationship by offering the O5 a gesture of goodwill. I am going to offer you one of the books in the set of nine, to shore up your defenses in light of the recent attack on one of your facilities by the Chaos Insurgency. 05-4 Set of 9? I don't believe I'm familiar with this item. 05-5 I believe he is referring to SCP-6419. I will send all the Council the relevant documentation. In regards to SCP-6419, Site-78 has theorized that there may be more books belonging to its set due to it apparently being second in a set. HTCOO our Valkyries recently retrieved Volume 6, and after some examination, we conclude this anomaly would be better off under the Foundation's watch. We certainly admire the Foundation's compromise for worldwide security and peace, and we are always glad to contribute in the best way we know. We only ask for some information in return. 05-2 Retrieved it from whom? And I can't imagine it was a bloodless affair. HTCOO we acquired it from the Bulk Division when we noticed a sudden increase in their capacity for anomalous weaponsmithing. Our actions ensured they were returned to baseline. At this rate, you may as well consider outsourcing some of your duties to us. 05-2 The Nerve. Don't act like you are a charity organization. The Bulks must have been up to something if somebody hired you to get rid of them. Probably squeezed some local governments out of a significant amount of money. HTCFO. It was a very profitable venture, especially with Volume 6 in our hands. We've taken the call on it, Hephaestus' Manual. It's a book that allows its users to write queries for weapons and armor. These queries are then answered with weapon schematics and anomalous materials to create them. 05-3 So you're already stripped it of everything useful and are trying to hand it off to us? Why not just keep it? HTCEO. We've determined that it is more beneficial and profitable for us in the long term to have the SCP Foundation as a strong force in the world, and you have information relevant to us. 05-2 What exactly are you asking for? HTCOO. We would like to request you share the SCP-6755 file with us. Once we have that intel, we'll transfer the book to your care. 05-3 The Pale Lady? What exactly are you going to do with that information? HTCIO That is classified. 05-2 There's more you're not telling us. You walked into this conversation knowing full well there was a set of nine, as you call it, and the fact we had one in our possession. HTCEO A good player never reveals all his cards. Now. Do we have a deal? 05-1 We will put it to a vote. All members pass their votes to determine 
if we should trade for Volume 6 in exchange for information on SCP-6755. O5-1-4-5-7 Dash nine, dash ten, dash eleven boat yes, dash two, dash three, dash six, dash eight, dash twelve vote no. Motion passes seven to five. O five dash one. The majority has spoken. We will transfer that information to the high table shortly. HTCEO. We're glad you came to the right decision. We'll have a representative over with the cargo in 24 hours. Oyen Ayor Allah. Old Norse for quote, Odin owns you all. Unquote. Addendum 6952.01 Curated list of current SCP 6952 1 instances. Goss Rifle. Weapon type Assault Rifle. Firing modes Full auto. Three round burst. Single fire. Effective range: up to 1.5 kilometers. Projectile speed: 1,120 meters per second. Mach 3.38. Ammunition: 8 mm tungsten anti-armor sabot. Magazine size: 50 round magazine. One battery rated for up to 800 shots. Required SCP-5952-2 instance. Coronal Ferrite Author Bulk Division Description The Goss Rifle is a ballistic projection device shaped like a conventional rifle firearm, but uses a coil gun design in place of gunpowder propulsion. Coil gun design incorporates electromagnetism in place of conventional gunpowder explosions. The bullets in a coil gun are not bullets, but simply solid ferromagnetic objects with aerodynamic shapes. This previously theoretical design would allow for higher speeds with deadlier ammunition, and with the superconductor, it needs very little maintenance due to few moving parts. Inside the chassis of the gun is a series of coils wrapped around the barrel made from coronal ferrite, which is a metal with anomalous heat resistance and superconducting properties. Coronal ferrite lacks electrical resistance allowing the coils to be more power-efficient and generate enough magnetic pull to accelerate the projectile at supersonic speeds. Most critically, the gun doesn't generate heat. A ferromagnetic projectile is provided by the magazine into the barrel, with an anomalous magnetic shield around the magazine's remaining ammunition to prevent the gun from ripping itself apart. To compensate for the added recoil of the higher-speed projectile, kinetic dampeners were installed into the Gauss rifle's chassis by combining previous Foundation designs with ones provided by SCP-6952. This results in a ballistic delivery system with less recoil than even many pistols. The rifle can be equipped with an underbarrel 38mm laser-guided Heat-9 rocket. High Explosive Anti-Tank An explosive charge collapses a metal liner into a hot super-plastic jet to cut through armor. Several variants have been developed for anti-personnel and anti-armor purposes. SCP-6952-2 Description Atomic Number 26 Symbol C-FE Location Ural Mountains, Rocky Mountains, Himalayas, to be discovered Melting Point, 10,000 degrees Celsius Coronal ferrite is an allotrope of iron found in mountainous regions where the atmospheric pressure is the lowest. It appears to act like regular iron under all circumstances, except for its extremely high melting point. Almost zero electrical resistance and superconducting capability. While this makes it harder to forge, the result is a superconductive metal, allowing for the development of rail guns and coil guns. Other potential applications of this material are broad, from space exploration to deep core drilling. Researcher's Notes If I am being honest, I'm no gun expert, but the men and women of Omega-45 give it their thumbs up. The sheer force of bullets' kinetic energy is highly effective against heavy layers of composite armor, like that of tanks, and if that isn't good enough, you have the missile launcher. In the field, the weapon has been performing admirably. 
our boys shred insurgency folks like paper, and the tungsten bullets don't bounce off of tougher anomalous hides. High Velocity Blade Weapon Type Bladed Weapon Usage UV Generator needs to be charged for 48 hours of use. Required SCP-6952-2 instance. Ultrasonic Vibration Generator Author Bulk Division Description Utilizing an ultrasonic vibration generator, the affected blade begins to vibrate at a rate of 10,000 Hz. The intense vibration of the atomic structure of the blade causes the bond of the target to disintegrate, leading to an easier cut. Foundation personnel combine a high-carbon adamantine blade with these generators to create weapons that can nearly cut through anything. Every high-velocity blade is fitted with a vibration-proof handle to prevent discomfort or harm to the user. Researchers notes, The high-velocity blades are quite an interesting development. We haven't yet come across a singular material that the blades can't cut through, although there is a limit to how much armor they can get through in a single swing. You can't cut a tank or a mech in half of this thing. That would be ridiculous. Researcher Johnston Hephaestus grade body armor Armor type Helmets Bullet-resistant plates, etc. Required SCP-6952-2 instance. Anamantite. Author: Bulk Division. Design refined by SCP Armaments Limited. Description: By using the anomalous properties of anamantite, a metal with similar properties to graphene, the Foundation was able to create lighter weight bulletproof vests and plates for plate carriers that render a soldier nigh-invincible from conventional weapons. The technology can be applied to all types of heavier metal armor and explosion-proof suits. In applications where the Hephaestus-grade plate would be too heavy and impair the user, a powered exoskeleton was developed to aid the user in remaining protected and keep him mobility. SCP-6952-2 Description Chemical Formula B4A Hardness 38 GPA Fracture Toughness 6.5 MPA Location of Adamantite Deposits Earth's Crust Composition is now 1% Adamantite Preparation 2B203 plus 7A through B4A plus 6AO Adamantite is an anomalous metal being held by Foundation scientists as a new wonder metal. Compared to boron carbide, boron adamantide is twice as strong. Adamantine shares the property of carbon, with the added bonus of being able to be made into steel. Boron adamantide is a super-dense, highly conductive material, is great for making metal mattresses, cutting tools, and most importantly, body armor. Its increased neutrono absorption capability makes it excellent for the construction of neutron bombs in the event there is an anomaly that requires such dire measures. Researchers notes, No metal is indestructible, and neither is body armor. What we've dubbed Hephaestus Grade is easily one of the largest leaps in armor technology we have for our MTF. While anomalous means are required to destroy it, we've had a bit of fun trying the old conventional ways of trying to dent a Hephaestus plate. Researcher Johnston Matter Displacing Gauntlet Weapon Type Glove Effective Range 100 meters. Maximum Mass Transferred 150 kg Uses 100 before needing to recharge the battery Required SCP-6952-2 Instance Atomic Resonator Author Researcher Johnston Description The Matter Displacing Gauntlet utilizes the Atomic Resonator an instance of SCP-6952-2 in order to teleport a target to the wearer at the speed of light. When activated, the resonator locks onto a chosen target determined by the line of sight. The resonator then begins taking measurements of the target's particles, position, moment, spin, and polarization, and then creates a copy of the user's current position, creating entanglement between them. This entanglement information is stored as qubit, a way of storing quantum data. It is comprised of a zero and a one, rather than a traditional bit 
which is only a 1 or a 0. A quantum channel is thus opened, and the target begins sending the information in qubits to the resonator to recreate the target at light speed. Once the resonator has created the perfect duplicate, it ensures the target was created with its original quantum state and discards the original target information. Thus, it is not true teleportation, but rather the recreation of data at another location. Researchers notes, This was my attempt to see if I could use SCP-6952 to revolutionize particle science, and I think I've done it. The gauntlet perfects quantum teleportation and quantum entanglement on a macro scale. Just imagine the applications for what we can do with this technology. Full-scale teleporters. Instant communication. I have very high hopes that this gauntlet could be the future of further quantum research. Researcher Johnson Bouncing Mary Bouncing Ball Grenade Weapon Type Explosive Blast Yield Varies Radius Varies Required SCP-6952-2 Instance Hacks Author Maria Johnston Description The Bouncing Mary has the shape of a regular rubber bouncing ball, but in reality, it is made of 95% SCP-E-45. Securely constructed pure explosive number 45. SCP-E-45's kinetic absorption property allows the ball to absorb the kinetic energy of its impact, storing five times the initial energy inside of itself. When 15 bounces are reached, the explosive is primed and begins to glow. The user only needs to depress the trigger for five seconds to activate the 10-second fuse. It will automatically detonate on the next impact. SCP-6952-2 Description Primary Ingredient Hacks Hephaestus Anomalous Explosive Or Adamant Hexogen O2N2AH2-3 Description SCP-E-45 is a plasticized explosive, similar to C-4, with an explosive power that is 2.5 times that of a kilogram of TNT, before its anomalous property is activated. The addition of adamantite into the formula RDX allows the material to anomalously store kinetic energy that is applied to it by a magnitude of five times. The Primary Ingredient of C-4 This allows users in the field to increase the blast yield without worrying about accidental detonation or having to use SCP-E-45. Researchers notes, I based this on the bouncing Betty mines from World War II. I figured that I should make something out of the box, and I've always had a fondness for rubber bouncy balls. The men say that this has no tactical advantage on the battlefield, but hey, it's a self-defense thing for me, so I'm keeping it. Hacks also works well as a C4 replacement. Want bigger bangs? Just throw the thing at a wall a few times. Researcher Johnston Addendum 6952.02 Testing with the creation of SCP-6952-1 instances On petition by Researcher Johnston, the Ethics Committee allowed for the attempted queries of more impractical requests of SCP-6952 to test its weapons-making capabilities. Query number 1. Goss Rifle with a Toaster Attachment Result. Instructions for one Goss Rifle with a toaster in the middle of the rifle's chassis. Toaster is powered from the Goss Rifle's battery. Toaster works as normal. Query number 2. Weaponizable Butter Result. SCP-6952 outlined a recipe for butter with a pH level of 14.0, comparable to 1.0 M sodium hydroxide. Query number 3. A Screwdriver Result. SCP-6952 produced a Gauss rifle variant that fired screws as ammunition. It is believed that while screwdrivers are unable to be produced, mass drivers that fire screws are acceptable. Query number 4. A bust of Researcher Johnston. Result, not applicable. Query number 5. A kitchen fork. Result, SCP-6952 produced instructions for a trident. Query number 6. A spoon. Result, not applicable. Query number 7. A weaponizable spoon. Result, not applicable. Query number 8. A door. Result, 
SCP-6952 produced instructions for a trap door into another dimension. The instance would not produce due to the concern of not knowing what might come out of the other side. Query number 9. Electric Bread Slicer. Result. Not applicable. Query number 10. Electric Human Slicer. Result. SCP-6952 created instructions for an electrically powered knife that anomalously cut flesh better than it did bread. Conclusions Well, I'm glad this thing never runs out of paper with how much junk we filled it with. It appears that its purpose of the weapons manual is pretty strict. It can work around some definitions, like turning a fork into what is essentially a weaponized fork. However, things that are strictly meant for tool or decoration purposes give bum results. Sometimes you could cheat it by wordplay or using certain prefixes, but other times nothing happens. Researcher Johnston Addendum 6952.03 Interview with Valkyrie Operative Delestris On March 10, Foundation Retrieval Teams managed to geolocate the location of the Valkyrie skirmish with the Bulk Division. MTF Omega-45 was sent to retrieve any instances relating to SCP-6952 that were potentially left behind by either side. It appeared as though the area had been picked clean. Fifty Bulk Division casualties were confirmed, along with one Valkyrie. When the Valkyrie was approached, it suddenly came back online and started to whimper for help. This Valkyrie was later determined to be of the Greek branch of the Bal Raven Corporation, codenamed Karaki Tun Skullamenon, Greek for Raven of the Slain. This Valkyrie was willing to give information on the Bal Raven Corporation in exchange for asylum. Interview Log Valkyrie A-04 The Lestris Recording started A-04 is seated in front of Researcher Johnston. A-04's armor is reminiscent of a Greek hoplite, and she appears to be of Mediterranean descent. Johnston, stating my name for the record, Researcher Maria Johnston, interviewing Valkyrie Operative Delestris, Number 4 of the Androlotarii, Greek for Destroyers of Men. A-04, your pronunciation is good, Doctor. I assume you have questions about what happened on the mission. I'm not a doctor, at least not yet. You can call me Johnston. Back to the topic at hand, yes? I'd like to be filled in. I can. It was supposed to be a relatively simple op. Me and my commander, Hippolyte, were paired with two Sevromea to eliminate some bulk mercenaries and take out their weapons workshop. Icelandic for Sword Maiden. And these Sevromea, who I assume are Nordic branch, who were they exactly? One of them was a commander, Brenhild, real hard ass for what I've seen of her. She was getting annoyed with her subordinate Sigrun during the whole mission. The Volks had done something particularly bad to Sigrun. Not sure what, but she was really riled up to engage with them. Did that affect the mission at all? Not at all. We arrived at the workshop. Bren Hild and Sigrun snuck in and eliminated all of them. Me and Hippolyte were keeping guard outside. I had to admit, they were pretty capable for a bunch of fanatics. You don't think highly of the Nordic branch? Normally you wouldn't catch me dead near one of those Nordic crows. They believe that going to Hades is a bad thing, and that by dying in combat they'll go to the land of the gods. It's madness. Mount Olympus is reserved for immortals only. It's heresy to believe otherwise. Interesting. I wasn't aware that there were other religions in Balraven. There are plenty of pagan religions in Balraven. We have a Mesoamerican branch, Shinto, Greek of course, and many more. We may call them by different names and worship them differently. All of us have different ideas about where we're going to end up after all this. But at the end of the day, Kukulkan is just Jormungandir by another name, and the comparison can go on with all the other big snakes. It's the one thing that stops us from just tearing each other apart. It's a unique way of interpreting the theology. So what happened after Brynhild and Sigrun cleared the warehouse? We came to get the place ready for a retrieval team when we saw Brynhild scolding Sigrun. There was his corpse near Sigrun, absolutely torn apart. Brynhild was trying to tell her that her revenge mission against some guy named Grigori was going to get her killed. 
Sigrin, however, was gloating about being able to get Grigori's unit information from the guy. Anyway, we told them both to stow it, and that's when it happened. We got ambushed. They were waiting for you? I don't know how they knew, but the wolves were all over us. The operations department told us to get the hell out of there, but there were too many of them. I took a round from one of the rifles, which ripped straight through my chassis, hurt like hell. I know the kind you're talking about. Goss weapons are terrifying. You don't know the half of it. Anyways, my commander tells them to leave me. Spartan philosophy, you see. Weak don't deserve to be saved from the battle build. Brynhild and Sigrun disagreed, but my commander outranked them. My commander gave me one last task. Detonate the explosives they had on the site and cover their escape. Scorched Earth. And you did? Even with injuries like that? Your body was absolutely torn apart by the time we found you. I cut them all down. Every one of those rabid dogs. I made it to the cache and blew them all sky high. I had my golden coin on me to give the ferryman when I went out, but he never came. I guess my backup systems kept my organs alive long enough for you to find me. That's quite the story. Can you go back? Why do you want to stay with us? I'm a warrior through and through, like the Athenians and Spartans before us. But Valraven? They don't have honor. Why would I want to be a part of an organization that doesn't care about its soldiers? No one came back for me. Not even the Ceramea. Even if the Severamea would want even if the Severamea wanted to, they likely assumed you were dead. I agree. Val Raven probably wrote me off of the loss. Just another negative in their ledger. God damn it. I used to be a soldier fighting for a good cause before those damn suits showed. I lost my arms on a UN peacekeeping mission, but then they came. We'll give you a purpose, they said. You'll feast on the battlefield once more. So what did I do? Of course I said yes. I wanted my arms back. That's how they get you. They came to me because I couldn't say no. More like vultures rather than crows. Well, I am preparing to offer you something. Your record shows that you are a capable warrior, and we need somebody to train our MTF in case the Cartagena Agreement goes sour. Delestrius, I am offering you a place in one of our mobile task forces. My boys call themselves the Street Samurai. Would you like to join? It's better than sitting in one of your containment cells for the rest of my life. Excellent. It'll take a while to get the paperwork approved. This is a bit of an unusual move, but I want the best of the best in Omega-45. You'll also probably have to have a failsafe installed in your cybernetics, like an easy shutoff. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm no stranger to having hardware installed. Hopefully our partnership will be better than my last one. End of recording. After the interview, Researcher Johnston sent a petition to Midwest Command to request that A-04 transfer to MTF Omega-45. The application is still pending. From the Office of Site Director Leia Richter, the following notice has been disseminated to all personnel employed within Site-78. Attention to all staff. Due to the involvement with the Val Raven Corporation in the efforts to retrieve the remaining books in the set of nine, all mobile task forces are to be on high alert for Val Raven interference in our containment operations. All MTFs are not to engage with Val Raven personnel in combat, unless an order has been given down by the Overseer Council. The Cartagena Agreement prevents us from open conflict, but they've made clear through their actions that, like with the insurgency and bulk division before them, they are attempting to locate the missing volumes in the set. We do not need to break our long-standing agreement without reason, but we cannot allow any of these volumes to fall into their hands. Containing the set is now this site's utmost priority, and if it comes a day when we must fight the Bow Raven for control of the set, we will be ready. Site 78, please remain vigilant. These are troubling times. Foundation Mobile Access Terminal Interlogin Credentials User account Johnston M. XXX Apprentice Samurai XXX. Welcome employee. Number 021E. Maria Johnston. You have zero pending messages. Send email. Recipient Greg Chudley, 
at skip.net. Subject: Regarding the connection between SCP-6952 and the set of nine. Body of message: Hello, Greg. It has been a bit since our last correspondence. I apologize that I've been so tight-lipped on specifics on SCP-6952. Its classification of Thaumiel has necessitated level 4 clearance. I've been trying to get Director Richter to relent, given that SCP-6952 is part of the ongoing research into the set. However, she seems adamant that your electric personality isn't the right fit. Now, in regards to SCP-6952's connection with the set, I can say that, with SCP-6419 formerly in the hands of Chaos Insurgency and the Balraven Corporation having knowledge of SCP-6952 before they retrieved it, I think something might be cooking in the GOI community that we just aren't aware of yet. We tried looking to see if we could exploit the rift between the main Nordic branch of Balraven with their overseas branches to see if any of them would give up something, but that turned up empty. The true author of these books evades us still. In addition, in addition, I received your list of queries, and I was permitted to test them. It wouldn't reveal the identity of or make weapons that could kill its author. I am not suggesting trying to eliminate the author yet. But if we knew what kind of weapons could kill them, we could infer their identity. SCP-6952 would not make weapons that could destroy other books in the set. It won't respond to queries it can't make weapons for. If this thing has sentience, we haven't found any evidence of it yet. I hope that answers some of your questions. I'll keep you posted on any further developments. Send mail.